Brady D is a great guy, and his videos are fantastic. What's poppin' people? I'm Rita D, and I've tested positive for swag. And in this video, I'm gonna break down some of Cold Eastwood's uh, dumbest moments uh, in his recent videos. I plan on doing this with a lot more of his videos. Uh, so let's just jump right into things. Let's take a look at this clip right here. The most potential for Microsoft could be from the purchase of Ninja Theory. With just 20 people, the Ninja Theory studio created the award-winning Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice and the Xbox 360 era enslaved Odyssey to the West. Now as you can see, he's talking about Ninja Theory while showing Sekiro Shadows Die Twice gameplay, which is a From Software game. To me, it seems like maybe he's doing this, I don't know, maybe he's just an idiot and doesn't know anything about this developer, uh, or he's doing this in order to try to make Ninja Theory look better than they really are. Let's move on to the next clip. Killzone has always tried to fill the FPS shoes on PlayStation with the launch title Killzone Shadowfall. It was hailed as beautiful but boring by PlayStation fans barely cracking the 70s on Metacritic. A year later, it was toppled by Halo 5 Guardians. <laughs> A year later, it was toppled by Halo 5 Guardians, widely described as Halo's worst campaign, but with incredible visuals and stellar combat. Other than Killzone and Halo, the consoles do not offer another exclusive first-person shooter. So I think this clip right here is hilarious because it's not enough just to talk about how Halo is a good game and a good multiplayer game and a solid exclusive, one of the biggest franchises in gaming history. It's not enough to talk about that. No, he has to hype it up as a game with insane visuals. When one of the biggest issues people had with Halo 5 was the visuals. If you go to a lot of forums, and I'll post a lot of content right here for you guys to look at, if you go to a lot of forums, you have Halo fans that are talking about, what is this? This is basically Halo 4 graphics, you know, for the Xbox One, with, you know, the game running at 60 frames instead of 30. You have so many terrible textures. You have previous Halo games that looked better texture-wise, and this clown is saying that Halo 5 has insane visuals. Again, terrible point. Let's move on to the next clip. This generation is all but killed off the couch co-op experience with split-screen gaming, and the only thing left is online co-op tethered by party chat. And Microsoft seems to be focused on providing this type of experience unique for exclusives. The difference is stark playing a gorgeous game like Infamous Second Son by yourself on PS4 or fighting side by side with two to four friends on an Xbox One exclusive. What Xbox lacks in narrative or story, it makes up with authentic interactions with friends online throughout the gameplay story of Halo, Gears, or even a game like State of Decay 2 that won over players despite its abysmal review score. First off, I think it's hilarious how he tries to say that if you play a story-based game on PlayStation, that's like an isolated experience, as if we don't have party chat. Um, it, it's absolutely hilarious to me how he still goes to such lengths to praise a game like State of Decay 2, which is broken in so many ways. So many ways. Just take a look at some of these clips. I mean, this is insane. This is a broken game, and he's trying to say that Xbox has something up on PlayStation by having games like this because you can play them in a co-op manner. I mean, this is such reaching, it's insane. At this point, the Xbox exclusive is basically boiled down to, sorry, not available on PlayStation or Nintendo. Will Xbox exclusive IPs ever come to PlayStation? No. The huge difference here is that Microsoft holds their exclusive IPs to the platform, which spans PC and console. So this is really funny because he tries to say that a multi-platform game is on one platform. I mean, PC and Xbox are two different platforms. Sony holds their IPs to one console, one place, and one way to play it. Which is the definition of an exclusive. If you want to enjoy the experience of the large majority of your games on the best platform and the best console with the best visuals, you definitely should have a PC or an Xbox One X as your main gaming platform. So obviously the Xbox One X is going to have the best visuals if developers decide to take advantage of the platform. But that doesn't mean it's the best console. 
best console is personal preference. I may not like the XMB on the Xbox One, and personally, I do not. I prefer the PS4's XMB by a mile. So for him to make this blanket statement of the Xbox One X is the best console, that's up to personal preference. That's not on him to tell you which console is the best. And for him to say that this should be your main gaming platform, again, is a desperate attempt to sell the Xbox console to you. The fact of the matter is this, with me, I enjoy PlayStation exclusives more than the vast majority of games out there. You know, as much as I play a lot of multiplats like Assassin's Creed and love them, in general, I would take PlayStation exclusives over multiplats. And then I can still play those multiplats on my PS4. The other thing is this, a lot of those multiplats have PlayStation exclusive content. So in the end, I'd rather have my PlayStation as my primary console. And then Nintendo consoles secondary, PC third, and Xbox dead last, just like it is in sales, because of the fact that... I mean, I can play so many of those Xbox supposed exclusives on PC, you know what I mean? So I don't need an Xbox One X. This dude is, like I said, seriously trying to sell the Xbox One X, and I think it's pathetic. I don't understand why he would do this. I'm going to say that again. If you want to have the best visuals, the best flexibility, and the best experience for the majority of your games, you should be gaming on a PC or the Xbox One X and the handful of PlayStation exclusives each year on a PS4. This makes the Xbox platform, despite what Sony's CEO says, truly the best place to play. Well, considering the fact that I can play almost all of those games on a PS4, I mean, I'd hardly say that the Xbox One X is the best place to play, considering the fact that it doesn't have any real exclusives. Um, and like I said, I can play the PS4 exclusives, which he praises, along with all these multi-plats. And then if I want a bad Xbox game like State of Decay 2, I can play that on PC. I don't need an Xbox One X. So again, more damage control, and it's just ridiculous. Xbox One has some amazing games this generation, and their collective grade is around a B-, maybe a little lower, but no one can ignore or stop talking about how PS4 has two times the exclusives with a collective grade of B- to up to A-. Well, first off, PS4 does not have two times the exclusives, as this guy says. It has far more than that because the Xbox has pretty much no exclusives. Most of these supposed exclusives are also on PC. The only games off the top of my head I can think of that are worthwhile exclusives still are Halo 5 and Sunset Overdrive. So, by definition, that's a completely false statement. Moving on from that, I went on Metacritic and did some math. It turns out, for all the 784 games on Xbox One this console generation, the average for those review scores is a 71.869, so let's, let's round that up to 72. That's hardly the B-, maybe a little lower that he said in the video. So again, just outright false statements, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about you guys. Even if we only counted the 19 mainstream, well-rated PS4 exclusives versus Xbox One's 10 exclusives, PS4 still offers more, and the highly rated games like Bloodborne, Uncharted 4, and God of War tower over the best Xbox has to offer. Five out of the 19 games here are MLB The Show games, and a couple of games like Nier Automata and Nioh will likely make their way to the Xbox One. As PS4-only gamers seem to shout like a chorus, Sony is giving me banger after banger. The reality is Sony's first-party studios only provide a small portion of the exclusives, and Sony is reaping the benefits of incredible third-party support that cannot be played on an Xbox. So here he's been called out on this a lot in the comments as well, but I figured it was worthwhile to bring up. He keeps talking about MLB The Show and indie games on PS4 being exclusive, but he doesn't say anything about the insane amount of Forza games on Xbox One, many of which aren't even exclusive because they're also on 360 and of course on PC as well. This is Colt Eastwood. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, here are those 45 indies that you've probably never played and maybe never even heard of. Zero Escape, Everything, Robbie Roby, Downwell, Scale Run Extended, Darius Burst, Yakuma Kiwami, Disingia 5, Steins Gate, Dragon Crown RPG, Children of Zodiacs, Helldivers, Tearaway Unfolded, Dangaropa V3, Zen Pinball, 
Zen Pinball 2, Zen Pinball 3, Sprint Vector, Sports Friends, Galaxy Dimensions, I Expect You to Die, Nuclear Throne, Econoclass, Steamworld Heist, Transistor, Dragon Quest Builders, Payu Payu Tetris, Trine 2, Hatsune Miku, Detention, Polybus, Salt and Sanctuary, Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, XRD, Static, Moss, Pyre, Wise 8, DJ Max Respect, Odin Sphere, and Talos Principle. 45 indie games rated 80 or higher on Metacritic. I'd like to predict that a lot of people are going to be claiming damage control or Xbox fanboyism in the comments, but it doesn't matter. For the first time, I am truly anticipating a multi-platform E3 conference experience to see what Microsoft and Sony have in store for my PS4 and my Xbox One next year. Like I said, PS4, it's my perfect secondary console. Already this past few months, I played the incredible Uncharted 4, God of War, and I've just started a few hours into Horizon Zero Dawn. And I can't wait to get Spider-Man at the end of the year. But on Xbox, I'll mostly be occupied with Forza Horizon 4, Far Cry 5 expansions, more of State of Decay, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Red Dead Redemption 2, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, all of those on Xbox One X. So this is where he really digs his own grave. First off, let's talk about Dragon Quest Builders. That's not an indie game, that's made by Square, a major third party. Um, let's also talk about how he said Yakuma Kiwami. Let's see what happens if I search that on Google. Oh, would you look at that? It's Yakuza, which is a game made by Sega. Again, another major third party. And this is the most pathetic part. He talks about Tearaway being an indie game. Tearaway was made by Media Molecule, a Sony first party developer. And then he's bringing up in some of these videos, this is before Playground was bought by Microsoft, he's bringing up the Forza Horizon games without talking about how those are indie games, like Playground used to be an independent developer. So he doesn't bring that up, but he has the audacity to say that Media Molecule is an indie developer when they're owned by Sony? I mean... <laughs> This is complete and utter nonsense. So, you know, like I said, Colt Eastwood, he's a fraud, he's a loser. I plan on making more of these videos. He doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. And it's like some people said during the Corporate Slave Awards last year, what's really sad about this guy is that people believe him because he tries to present himself as neutral, when really if you break down what he's saying, he doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. Or he's purposely misleading people, which is, again, just pathetic. But anyway, I mean, look. It'd be one thing if he were saying they're trying to debate with people or do fun console war videos going back and forth and, you know, trolling this and that. But he doesn't do that. He's presenting himself as if he's this authentic, you know, uh, independent gamer who, you know, yes, he prefers Xbox, but he tells it like it is, blah, blah, blah. In reality, we see he's a total clown. But anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and keep it frosty.